Can you introduce yourself? Hi, my name is Violeta Ivanova. I'm a physiotherapist in Finland. I work uh, mostly in neurological and pediatric physiotherapy, and I have a Bachelor of Sciences in Physiotherapy from Satakunta University of Applied Sciences in Finland. What made you want to get into esports? Starting from a love for gaming. Uh, generally, like most people in esports, I love to play games. And also seeing that uh, it is a niche that has not yet developed enough in the healthcare area. There's not enough healthcare professionals involved. And it is very difficult when a gamer goes to a typical healthcare professional in a, a healthcare center or a hospital and requires treatment. It is very difficult to get appropriate treatment when the person standing in front of them has never played games. They're not familiar with what are the positives, what are the uh, negatives. And there is unfortunately a stigma involved. And it's not necessarily that somebody is at fault. It's just that there is a lack of communication between industries. So the dialogue is not, is not very clear. There is a lot of content online, uh, which is mostly geared towards gamers, but it's not geared toward healthcare professionals that have to follow evidence-based approach. So YouTube video is not going to be good enough. What my wishes were when I first started to uh, get into the area is to try and bridge that knowledge gap to try to get knowledge between gamers and healthcare professionals to get them to talk to each other and to help uh, break a bit the stigma involved uh, with gaming. What is your favorite part about working in esports? I think for every physiotherapist, the best part of the job is it doesn't matter what industry you're in, is just to see people get better, uh, have improved quality of life. That also applies to esports. And what do you think is the biggest challenge that you face working in esports? I think most people don't actually know what physiotherapists do. It's really difficult for them to understand why you'd even want to be involved in esports. What can you do for them? Especially since there's very few at this point working uh, with teams worldwide. Usually they work at a very high level. Usually it's in the USA. So everywhere else in the world, it's very difficult to explain why you would want to have anything to do with esports. Why do esport teams need a health and performance support staff? I think the basic of answer for that would be taking care of your health is the, the really good baseline that you want to have. It applies for everybody. And in esports, especially because it is so highly competitive, it is a very quickly developing industry. We have a lot of risk factors that we're not fully aware of. They're not fully researched yet in specificity to esports. So until we have more industry data, there are a few things that we can do. We can use uh, knowledge that we already have from other industry that involve a lot of the, the similar kind of sedentary working hours at a computer desk all day. And we can use that and the rehabilitation methods that we already know from, from those industries and implement them in esports uh, for treatments, for injury prevention, and like at least from a physiotherapist point of view. Until we can get that very industry specific uh, kind of protocol that we can apply then uh, for even better treatment. But of course, we can also work in multi-professional teams as it is in traditional healthcare. Physios rarely work on their own. There's always nursing staff, there's nutritionists, there's psychologists, occupational therapists. And at least I would personally like to see that also applied in esports. Uh, I know that at some high levels that is already happening, but it would be very beneficial for more teams to get that. And of course, we can work together with different performance staff um, with different kind of coaches to improve the player's performance uh, because of course physical training does translate into cognitive performance as well. So we have a lot of knowledge already from traditional sports and we know uh, based on research how uh, improved cognitive performance can get through physical activity 
on top of all the mental and physical health benefits that already come with movement. So I think there is definitely a lot that healthcare professionals, that different kinds of sports sciences staff uh, can provide to an esports team. And it can ensure the, the long-term development of the athletes. What are the different kinds of jobs that are available in esports performance? I think that would depend on what kind of person you're hiring. There is a lot of overlapping of skills because again, there's not really that many uh, professionals that are involved in esports. There's a lack of education that is very specific to different aspects of esports. I'm talking higher education, universities, colleges, and so on. Where there is, it's primarily in business and marketing. So in those parts, maybe some sports sciences as well, you can get esports specific, um, but it's not that common. So you would see, I would say the general areas would be mental, physical, nutrition and gaming. So in the mental, you would have the uh, kind of cognitive performance, a lot of mental coaching, people that are with psychology background. In some cases you would have maybe a physio, but not necessarily. For physical health and performance, you would definitely have uh, physiotherapy, sports sciences, somebody with a fitness background that is a personal trainer. Then you have for nutrition, you would have the nutritionists or other kind of, uh, some teams have chefs, uh, they're private chefs or catering. You would have someone from sports sciences to be also educated in nutrition. And then of course, for the gaming part, you will have people that are familiar with game specific factors that they know team dynamics, they know communication, they know how a team can get better and how a player can get better. Uh, so again, that's a lot of positions when you think that in some cases there's only one person doing all of that, you can kind of imagine that this is not realistic to expect of one single coach to be able to be versed in all of these aspects. Because even if you study a medical degree or healthcare, you're not, you will have a lot of base knowledge, but you will not be nearly uh, prepared enough to take on all of these and what is led for somebody without any education and all of that, have all of that information on their shoulders. There's a lot of jobs. Uh, at least these are from the kind of team management, uh, like player management part. Otherwise, you would have all the marketing and business and commenting and streaming and playing and merchandising, designing everything there is. It, it's a full industry, like you can have pretty much anybody uh, involved in there. How often are job opportunities available in these positions? Like for most of the world, you will have to spend just networking, networking, networking uh, until you can finally get somebody uh, to, to give you a position. Do you think the job market is increasing in esports? Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, like even compared to a year ago, partially thanks to the pandemic that now more people know about esports and a lot of traditional sports teams are getting on board with that. We've seen Formula One get into it, FIFA get into it, or NBAs, NHL, NFL, and all of those organizations go into it. More university programs will be opening. So we have the academic interest as well. There's been more talk in healthcare about it as well, because you get more of the gamers getting into those education. So they will be, I don't want to say naturally passionate about it because not every gamer likes esports. Uh, but they will be more inclined to consider looking into those uh, those areas. Are you aware of any differences globally in terms of esports jobs? On a global market, there it would be a lot more difficult. I think the biggest factor is having the teams in your area. Uh, if you're from a smaller country where esports is not that popular, having teams in your area is not that easy. Or if you're from a really big country but just happen to be in a in a district where there's not any esports activity, if that it would be more focused in a bigger city, maybe a capital area. Uh, so you wouldn't have the access. The other factor would be that most teams, they're not 
uh, together in a team house they would be basically working from home from wherever they are in the country so uh, it's not centralized um, enough for that so you would first need to have the team that is in one area that is on a certain level that has certain sponsors that would then be able to afford to pay an extra staff member whether it's part-time or not uh, it is still payment and that that team would also be interested in investing into player well-being what areas in the esports industry do you think are trending towards more job opportunities I think we've seen a lot of focus on mental coaching so far. I think that is like the the staple person that a team would want to get uh, once they get to the point that they can bring in somebody else. So I think mental coaching has been uh, a staple. Now some teams are going towards uh, psychologists or sports psychology is usually um, used. Some are bringing in uh, personal trainers, uh, physiotherapists who are available. Some would have nutritionists or even their own chef, uh, which is also really good. But that is also limiting because you, you need the team to be in one place. My guess would be the biggest area of increase would be in physical health. Uh, as we get more research published, as we get more people involved, uh, I think physical physical health would be the next uh, big expansion. Do you think it's realistic to be working full-time in esports performance right now? Oh, absolutely. Uh, There are so many professionals in the area. There are so many capable and knowledgeable people that do work full-time, that uh, they are involved in esports. They work with all the top teams and it shows in the results. Uh, You see the teams perform over and over again. I would definitely like to see more of that come uh, down the line because, um, as I said, it's just top level. The more team getting into that mid-tier, maybe, I would say mid-tier would be good, uh, that they can start bringing in more people uh, in, then that would be, uh, that would be definitely space for full-time professionals to be involved. I've heard of a lot of people who begin their career with either free consulting or other forms of volunteer work. How does compensation typically work? It is unfortunate, uh, but that is pretty true. You kind of have to uh, begin with the free consult, especially like from my point of view. Uh, in physiotherapy, most teams won't have a clue what you do. Even if they know what physiotherapist is uh, at a hospital setting, they wouldn't know how that would translate into working in a team. What can you even do for them? Like they would, they would have no clue. So you have to basically start with trying to present yourself uh, in a way that you can improve performance. That comes from knowing the, the specifics of uh, what the team is competing in, what age group they are. Uh, because that would affect the risk factors. Being able to pull on the massive clinical evidence that we already have from other industries, translating it into esports and applying it or adapting it. You might have to be able to do virtual consults if the players are all over the place. So you would have to explain that in a very marketing way, I would say, uh, to... um, to a team, maybe do a couple of consultations with the players, maybe do some evaluations, probably give them a few exercises to try out to see how it feels. And maybe if they're interested after that, they will call you, maybe not. That is part of the the networking and the job search. It's a lot of LinkedIn involved. You have to be able to pitch yourself very well towards towards esports because um, like if you really want to work in the industry uh, and you have to be willing to spend uh, some of your hours for just doing free work. Where would you go to look for jobs in the esports field? LinkedIn. I, I have found so far that that is the, the one place that most teams would have some staff members on LinkedIn worldwide that is uh in some countries it is more advanced than others it wouldn't be a job listing under the job section in linkedin you just have to find the teams that you really like and you would really like to work with you really support 
the, the organization that they're building and that you think that you can contribute something to make it even better. Uh, be very proactive about it. You will have some not answered messages, that's for sure. Uh, but as long as you you keep trying to get in touch with people, eventually somebody will notice and they will care uh, about their players enough to um, to get somebody else who can help. Do you have any advice for anyone that's looking to work in esports? Just proactive attitude. Uh, definitely try to reach out first because, again, those people you, you're trying to get into a, into an area that people don't necessarily know what you do, and you have to be the one reaching out towards them and with the right mindset. Again, be ready for. Uh, some free work uh, at first, not necessarily having the expectations of stardom uh, because that's not realistic. Local is probably the best you can do. Uh, of course, everybody would like to be in the top tier, uh, but again, starting from what is in your area, chances are there might be a small team somewhere near that would be willing to talk to you. Uh, so starting from there, I think that is the easiest point. And then really get in touch with other people in the area um, and in other people involved in esports. If somebody is uh, developing events uh, in your country or region, if uh, there are people streaming, uh, if there are some organizations that are facilitating uh, different school um school cur uh, or curriculum activities that are related to esports or gaming. Uh, if uh, there is an organizer that does uh, gaming events, uh, these would be your probably the first points of, of reaching. And of course, other professionals that already work in the area, in the industry, trying to get uh, online courses done, uh, even if your um, own region doesn't offer uh, further education related to esports. A lot of other universities would. And nowadays you can get pretty much anything online available for just self-learning at home. How can people contact you? You can find me at Violeta Ivanova on LinkedIn and on Facebook. Uh, also Violeta hash 7785 on Discord. If you're interested in anything related to physiotherapy and gaming and esports or Finland, uh, feel free to reach out. Okay. Thank you for your time. Thank you so much.